Alrighty, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to support your STL files for resin 3D printing. Now, this is something I did touch on a little bit in my ultimate guide for beginners to resin 3D printing. Um, but someone did leave a comment on that video just asking if I could go into a little bit more detail on that matter. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing here. And I'll be using Chitty Box Basics because that's just what I know, that's what I use. And it's very much aimed mostly at beginners. I should, well, I guess it's very good for beginners. So yeah, that's what we're using in this video. And I've got my Elgu Mars 5 Ultra build plate set up here. And let's add a file. So I downloaded this um, Kratos, Kratos, however he pronounces his name. And we'll get his body in to start with. And there he is looking quite large. So we'll scale him down to about 40%. It doesn't really matter. So we'll get his body in. It's a shame his head's not separate. That would be quite handy. And what have we got for the legs? Again, we'll go 40%. Okay, so let's move these over there. When it comes to support and miniatures, especially um, anything with faces, I always like to angle them back around sort of 35, 45 degrees. Well, we've got 36 here. Um, this is because I don't want any supports touching his beautiful face. Um, because sometimes supports, when you remove them, they can leave a little bit of scar and a little bit of mark, and they might need touch them up and if you've got them on a more sort of flat surface like the skin and that it's not too bad um, but on a face it could muck up some of your detail and I don't know, it's just moving forward so you wouldn't want to print them at this orientation because uh, as you can see he starts getting a few supports in his face not too many thankfully but um, it's all on the front of the miniature you can see how many there are on the front and you'll see all that when you paint your miniature. So yeah, always angle them so the supports are mostly on the back side or the back facing of the miniature. And we've got wrong one selected there. And then we'll click on the support tab. Um, I'm sorry, I apologize, there's a little bit out of shot on here. Let's move this image over. Okay, that's a little bit better. You can see that a little bit more now. And you see you've got light, middle and heavy support options. For something like this, where it's sort of a ch big sort of chunk of resin, it's not massive, but it's still a bit of a chunk. Um, I would certainly use middle. Um, light is pretty good for most of your GW size miniatures and bits. And things like spacemen, heads, shoulder pads, backpacks, things like that. Definitely even light infantry size and spacemen size miniatures, you could probably get away with light quite easily. I mean, I use light supports most of the time and they're totally fine. If you're doing printing more busts or big figures than that, then definitely use middle. Heavy, I don't use heavy a lot. If you've got a larger printer, like a Saturn or a Jupiter even, and you want to print like a whole side of a tank or even a whole tank itself, um, which you could probably certainly do on a Jupiter, I'd imagine, then yeah, then I'll go for heavy. But um, yeah, most of the time, light is fine and middle is certainly all right. And of course, they would leave um, slightly bigger marks on the miniature. Um, but nothing too terrible. Now, there are ways you can change the contact points, thickness and things like that. That's a little bit beyond me, but I think you can all do it in here. Um, but I tend not to. Um, I don't really don't see much point of having a medium sized support if a contact point is going to be really small. So yeah, the default is normally quite good. And yeah, the auto supports are really, really handy. Um, they're really good. They're a lot better than they used to be. They didn't always used to be too good. But if you want to just put them all on manually yourself, then you can certainly do that. And you'll notice all these sort of areas here, they are normally a different color where the software sort of automatically detects where you'd need supports. Now you don't need to support the entire area. You can sort of see you've got little areas like here where the auto supports hasn't gone on. And this is where I like to just bring in some light supports and just add a few more. And sometimes you, it might be better just to bring this down because you can sort of see what areas will get printed first from these sections. 
So you know you better put one there rather than up there, if that makes sense. Let's go to the legs. Now with the legs I would probably just print them in this orientation. Now you might, especially early on, and I know I was someone who was like this, you might be tempted to have them like this because obviously we print layer by layer and if they're laying down parallel to the plate they will print a lot faster, which is true. But your chance of them failing is much higher, much, much higher. It's all to do with like suction and pressure. And I don't know the whole technical terms, but yeah, print in parallel to the build plate. It's, it's a good way to have failures. So I always avoid it. It's worth taking that extra time, especially these days when printers are so, so much faster. It's worth taking that extra time to get the angles right. And again, you can go with your 35 to 40, and then you'll have um, your supports here. But again, um, they could leave little marks when you take them off. And um, for something like this, I would actually go almost at 90 degrees. And you see all the supports are in this section, mostly where you're not gonna, you're not gonna see them on the miniature. Again, the whole suction thing if you're doing a really large piece and you're printing it like this, then you might get that suction issue again. But for something sort of where you've got this little area here, as opposed to like a larger area, it's not going to be as bad. And yeah, that should print quite all right. But of course, doing it like this, it puts in a lot of auto supports. Okay, so I've added in a Space Marine backpack here. Now, yeah. There's a lot of STLs kicking around on the internet of GW clones and similar things like that. I don't use them a lot personally. Um, obviously, with with our vast array of bits, um, they're not. It's not hard to come by a Space Marine backpack if I should need one. Um, I'm just using it in this video as an example, and I've also just chucked in a Space Marine style head as well. And um, just to go back on that point I made earlier, when it comes to faces. Always have them sort of looking, looking up like that. And the nose is where you really want to focus on. If you can get the nose to a point where, where it's going up at an angle, so it doesn't need any supports on it. And then you can see straight away, look, these, the auto supports go right underneath the back here and the whole face can just print without any supports at all. So, you know, you're not going to do any damage to it. And I always put um, middle on there, but really for something this small, just light will do. And yeah, when it comes to things like this, I sometimes put the extra one or two in. Sometimes you'll get auto supports where, uh, let's, let's get another one in. If I put that up right. Yeah, sometimes with auto supports, you might get this. And I really don't like this at all. So what we do is we come underneath and yeah, um, obviously I don't print them at this orientation, but sometimes you might get pieces what might have this sort of rounded bit of a bottom. I always like just to chuck in some extra ones. And five is probably too much, but but three at least. Just because I don't always trust that one support to hold the entire weight of the piece. So it's always good to have some backups. They're not going to make any difference to the model at all, but they just give you know, that extra little peace of mind. And um, if one support's failed, at least you know you've got some backups there. But yeah, again, I wouldn't print this at that orientation and that nose will probably fail when it's like this because it would need a support and then suddenly you've got a support up your nose and yeah, you don't want that. So you can disappear. And yeah, I brought that backpack in as well. The backpack, again, I'll do it this orientation, add in my auto supports and you can see like most of the supports are in areas where you're not going to see them on the miniature and like all that's going to print pretty well. Now you do see some little orange bits in there but I think that'd be that'd be okay nothing's floating and maybe that's something we should we should look at next is um so I'll explain on pieces that sort of float so let's get this one up like that so for example we lower this down let's just assume we've got our supports down the bottom here but nowhere else so we know all this is going to print and it's going to print lovely and then suddenly these pits appear and they don't have supports 
So they would be floating in midair. So they've got nothing to attach onto and they would fail. And you'd get the rest of your backpack, but you wouldn't get these little bits here and you'd have resin stuck to your FEP sheet. And then suddenly, if you don't notice that, your next print will fail. Or if you do notice it, you've then got to empty your whole vat and tidy all out. So always, always do that when you've got your supports in. I mean, I, I don't even have to imagine we haven't got supports up there because we just put them in, but yeah. This slider is really invaluable because you can just slide down and see if anything's floating. Um, it's quite obvious with this piece, but with some, some other miniatures it might not be. And then yeah, you can go to the lowest point and you notice where you want to start putting your supports in. Again, I wouldn't really print at this orientation. I mean, you could, and it would print quite nicely. I just prefer to have most of my supports on areas where you can't really see them. But yeah, something like that should, should print okay. And yeah, you can also use these down here to remove supports and just literally just click delete on any that you want to remove. And you can do that. Should you make a mistake? Um, obviously it's better to have too many supports than not enough. Um, although I've seen some free support stuff from certain companies where they just go really overboard and I really don't like it when you start getting loads of supports in and they all start just touching each other. Um, it's hard to really show that here when you sort of start getting a big old block like that. And then suddenly you've got loads attached to your piece there so it would be very hard to remove all of that without damaging this. So yeah I don't like a, a massive array of supports like that and I've seen that on pre-support stuff and it's yeah not pretty. And um, we've got it up to a little degree here um, but it's not too bad. Okay and lastly um, I think I might have used a bit like this or similar in my resin 3D printing video. This is a spear from Great Height Studio. And you could very well print that up like that. Again, as you can see, we've got that one support at the bottom. So I would come in and certainly add some more there and maybe on these little bits as well. And one on that, couple on that loop. Now, if, you probably just won't get every little bit like that, but most of them would be okay. But yeah, something like that would work quite well so that upright orientation works really well for weapons. You have to think about where your layer lines and stuff will be as well. Um, but of course, again, that 35 to 45 percent sort of sweet spot also works quite nicely. And I know a lot of people like to favour moving them a bit like this as well. Um, I believe that's mostly to do with um, if you get layer lines then they'll be less noticeable in orientations like this. So um, definitely something worth playing around with. And yeah, so you could print them like that. And I do recommend, even if you don't need to, just to have supports going all the way up, just to hold, just for strength really, just to really hold it in place um, more than actually supporting the piece itself. Because in theory, that, that would print, you could have a couple down the bottom and most of that shaft would print, print all right. Um, if it was, especially if it was smooth, um, <laughs> a nice smooth shaft, and um, there's a lot of detail on this one, so supports are needed a lot more. I mean, even with the auto ones, it starts getting quite busy around here, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's needed when there's a lot of detail like this, I guess. And again, definitely just resist the temptation to print it like this. I used to do it a lot when I first started, and yeah, it never, never went well. And that just, that just looks ghastly, doesn't it? I mean, you might get lucky and it might print, but nine times out of ten, you're going to have issues, especially if, a whole, if you have a whole build plate like that. Um, yeah, I don't recommend it at all. And lastly, I've just got a space moon shoulder pad here. Same thing again. Um, I like to angle it back a little bit. So the detail, um, if you've got a chapter symbol or whatnot on there, I always want that pointing up so that doesn't need any supports on it itself. And you can just support underneath the shoulder pad and yeah um, it'll all start from this point here so whether you might want to have 
extra supports just on the corners, just to be on the safe side, it's entirely up to you. But yeah, it all prints from just that one corner there. And that's about all I've got really to say on supports. And um, there's, there's obviously a lot more advanced stuff about supporting miniatures that I don't really need on my day-to-day -day, and most of you won't need on your day-to-day, -day, really. Um, a lot of stuff does come pre-supported um, and a lot of it is really good. But yeah, just on the off chance that you've got stuff that isn't, then hopefully this little guide has proved quite useful and just showed you a little bit of the logic behind um, how I like to support stuff when it comes to printing. So yeah, um, obviously, if you have any more questions or anything, um, do drop them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them for you. I'm sure there's probably little bits and pieces that I've probably missed, um, but I can't think of anything right now. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Please feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it, and feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. And yeah, um, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again in the next video.